parading every day, and we're taking a dope man to jail every day. <laughs> I think it's got to make a difference. It's Friday afternoon. And what's happening? Dog bite, grizzly, Irish, bread, and DJ. Detroit narcotics uh, cops are please. getting ready to raid two crack houses. It is just another day's work for dog bite. And another day of uncertainty for his wife, Betty, who must carry on her own life and career as an X-ray technician. I'm the deputy raid commander, and I'll be on the shotgun. He's going to get hurt. He has been hurt. He's ended up getting stitches. And OK, the entry team, uh, remember that there's two doors to this dwelling. There's an outside enclosed porch door, which opens outward. He's aggressive, and he likes what he does, and he's good at what he does. Outside security personnel, do not fire into that house unless you have a clearly defined target that's posing a threat to you. There's also the possibility that this job may kill him. The closest hospital is going to be St. John's. Scout car is responsible for conveyance if we get hurt. Detroit, narcotic squads make an average of 12 raids a day, more than 80 busts a week in a city that is second in the nation with drug-related crimes. I, I guess I've shotgunned, oh, maybe 150, 175 raids. I, it depends on who you talk to. I find it more stressful and more dangerous being the shotgun man than I do going into the dope house by myself and buying dope. When I'm in the dope house making the buy, it's just me. If I screw up, it's it's just me. Hey, guys, be careful. Be careful, guys. When I'm behind the shotgun going through that door, if I screw up, it's my crew. Dog bite, what, what are you just doing? Uh, saying a prayer. Do you do that every time? Yes, sir. Yeah, let's go, let's go. Here's the right here. There it is, see it? We're going wow. in, we're going in. Okay, got one in the window, one in the window. They're running. They're running. They're running. They're running. Holy, sir, come on. Help it. Get out. Watch out, watch out. Holy. Holy, watch out. Holy. Get up, get up. Get up. Get up against the wall. Get up against the wall. Look down! Look down! Get against the wall! I don't think about what he's doing. I can't. He's gone to do his job. And that's the only way I can look at it. If I think about what that job is, then I'd have a hard time dealing with it. Okay, I'll secure. How much money you got on your homes? Only about a hundred dollars that I got paid for my job. You want to see my checks? Okay, man. Do you have any narcotics on you? Do you have any razor blades or needles in your pocket? So I'm going to ask you to stand up and keep your head down, okay? Stand up, keep your head down. Do you sell dope in this house? Now, now, now this, this is what you call a, a, a bag. Right. Okay. So six dollars. That cost me six bucks. Yes, sir. Huh. We have twenty-five. Twenty-five. 146 packs, 130 dollars, and that's it. I mean, you come in here, you expend a, a lot of, of stress and, and a lot of effort and a lot of energy, <laughs> and, and you walk away with a small bag like this. Raid Commander, DJ. Does, do you have to knock down a lot of doors, though, to, that's true. to make a difference. We're doing the job that we're supposed to do. It's 7 p.m. One down, one more bus to go. Ready to go to the next one? Yeah, once we take a breather. <laughs> when we were first married, I didn't understand the closeness of the family of the police department. And I was real jealous. Real jealous that um, he would spend time with them when it was my night off or something, and it's, um, they have to have that. 
Who's got a cigarette? Anybody got a cigarette? Keep going. Despite undercover intelligence reports earlier in the day of large quantities of cocaine, when Dogbite and his fellow narcs hit, they find nothing. Don't get discouraged. We just have to keep up our enforcement efforts and keep hitting those doors. You know, if I can stop somebody from selling cocaine to a 12-year-old kid, you know, that's good enough for me. You know, I have kids of my own. So are, are you relaxed now? I'm winding down, yeah. I'm tired. I have a tremendous headache. It is now midnight. Dogbite and Betty are back home. Dogbite has survived another day. I, I'm curious, uh, as, uh, as he came home tonight, you didn't, uh, you didn't ask him what he'd, what he'd been doing today. Uh, do you normally talk about no. what he's been doing? No. You're not curious about it? Sometimes I'm curious about it. A lot of times I just don't want to know. And a lot of times he doesn't want to talk about it. Do you want him to get out of this? Only if he wants to. We talked a long time ago before we ever got married, and I know how much he loves his job. And he loves being a police officer. That's all he's ever wanted to do. And the minute he came home and hated his job, then it would be time to leave it. Then I would say. During our 48 hours in Detroit, there were, in addition to the four homicides, 501 other crimes committed. A pretty typical two days and two nights in a big city. You've probably heard the common complaint about our police. They're never around when you need them. Well, consider this. There are fewer than 500,000 men and women serving in America's police departments. And last year, there were more than 19 million reported crimes. I'm Dan Rather. Until next week, that's 48 Hours. Next on 48 Hours. Your high school years are the best years of your life. For some, it's a golden time on the way to success. No, no! This sucks! But for others, no, no, no. a lesson learned the hard way. Where are you supposed to be now, in school or out? 48 hours in high school, next week. Tonight, on Knott's Landing, when the most eligible bachelor in Lotus Point tells his young girlfriend he plans to marry a woman twice his age, there's going to be big trouble. But first, Ethan must choose between his job and his conscience on Paradise. Lee Horsley stars next. For a transcript of 48 hours, send $3 to Journal Graphics, 267 Broadway, New York, New York, 10007.